Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, bringing you some breaking news from January the 30th, 2016, just a couple of hours ago, around 6 p.m. Um, Pete Santilli, whom we all know is locked right now in jail. Deb, his co-host, is live streaming a rolling rally in order to support the Harney County residents in order to show support for the individuals on the refuge to make sure to get them out of there alive. Also, it is in support of having the unconstitutional lying Sheriff David Ward put in his resignation as well as Mr. Grassy and some other individuals which I covered earlier. So I'm not going to play this entire video of theirs but I am going to make sure to get you the information enough where you can see it. There will be a link below in the description box of the full footage. It is an hour and 12 minutes. It is well worth the watch. Patriots from across this nation are waking up. Patriots from across this nation have headed to Harn Harney County in order to be able to support the people not the corrupt system, not the corrupt individuals that have been involved with the assassination of Lavoie Fenicum, not the corrupt individuals who have been involved with the com being complicit in the burning down of homes and livestock and fences and electrical uh, poles and the intimidation and the threats. All of these it is, it is to the point America is standing up and we must stand up for our neighbors. The residents in Harney County are our neighbors. They need our help. They want our help. You will see that in this video. They are very supportive. Approximately 70% of the people inside of Burns, from what I have been told by a source, a credible source that lives in that area. 70% support and want the Patriots there. So I'm going to share this with you. Please uh, make sure that you watch the entire thing and let's get this message out there. We are standing together. This is not over. This is not a mainstream media lie. This is not the FBI lie, which we saw very clearly. You can see in one of my previous videos in an enhanced video, LaVoy Fenicum himself pointed out the man who shot him. LaVoy Fenicum was unarmed. And this cannot be allowed to stand. They are the, the federal government working in collusion with the corrupt Kearney County Commissioners, the corrupt Sheriff David Ward, the corrupt Judge Grassley, all of them have been complicit in the assassination of an innocent man, a man that was unarmed. And if we allow that to stand, it can happen to anyone, and we cannot allow that. Not here not in our union, not in the United States of America. We the people are bound together under the call of duty to protect our union, our people, and stand in the face of tyranny and oppression. No, I was um, trying to check you back. Oh. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how good it is to just know you're out. Yeah, well, tell me, I'm just not good to be out. Oh my, I thought I that... I don't think that's the right complaint. I think you're going to hell. I, I didn't think they were going to let anybody out. It, it's so hard to get accurate information. Are you okay? Yes, I am. Um, we just have... It is hard to get the accurate information that people need to know. 
people. Yeah. And I've been. You need to know what really happened. Yeah. I've been, I've been publishing online. I had, uh, you know, there's a lot of people trying to help and a lot of people getting information out. I had uh, about 4,000 people within 24 hours start following me on Periscope. People I don't know or anything just because everybody's trying to find out what's really happened. Okay, well, I can update you as fast as I can from that. Have you seen the video that they released? I did, but here's the problem, I it, it, they're not telling the truth as they're as you're watching it. Because what happened was that I was going to go home. And then one of my friends who was supposed to go do the video couldn't go. And I couldn't leave the little girl. And I went to take pictures of them. That's why I went. Right. So we, we were set up. They had an ambush set up for us. Absolutely. And they set it in the place, the most perfect place. I was on the phone and texting that area and it was the only place they had absolutely no self-service right no, they, they had they had clearly been planning this and they clearly also had somebody inside because they knew your guys' plans down to the T oh they did because it was that Mark Mark did it I believe it was Mark and he said something about well, and he, he was in there for a couple of days tell me how come he's out and nobody else is and he got he was in the van with us and we got pulled over we were saying no, we had to send other people ahead and then us and then the next ones, you know, and whatever. And and so we were kind of in that together. So they they knew. They knew. And so when we came up, we came through that. We came first and we noticed the people there, okay? And I was in the back with uh, Victoria and um, Brian Bundy. Right. And, and Ryan Payne was in the front and, and LaVoy was driving in that one. And then he, Mark was driving the one with Ammon and Abuja. Right. And so when we came through that, um, we noticed the vehicles. And they said, wow, did you see all the vehicles? And I could see them out the side corner, you know, because I'm in the back seat and I got the camera show on, so I can't see a whole bunch. But I could, but I saw the vehicles. Right. And then they could see them gaining up on us. And then we looked back and, and uh, Jeep was stopping. You know, because they just, they flip their lights on, and the boy says, "Look, now we're going, we're going to defeat the sheriff." You know, so he's heading out, and uh, Brian Payne's telling him, "No, dude, you need to slow down." You know, he says, "Slow, slow down, but they're gonna, you know, they're gaining on us, and you better just slow down." So finally, he talks the boy into slowing down, kind of pulling over. Okay, but we did were, did Lavoie so was when Lavoie. When Lavoie said he was going to go meet the sheriff, you mean the sheriff of Grant County, or is that what yes. at that meeting? Okay. Grant County, that was the meeting. Okay. Okay. So he reaches out. So Ryan Payne, with, you know, they pull up kind of behind us, and Ryan Payne rolls down his window and he puts both his hands out the window and they shoot at him and they hit the they hit the mirror bell. I thought they hit his wrist, okay, because he has that bracelet thing on. And I thought they hit him and jerked his hands back in. And, oh, my God. Because he had his head, head and his hand out, but he just went. It was not good. Wow. And so then finally, the word is going to take off. And, and Ryan says, no, no, no. And, he, and so he jumped out of the car. Well, Victoria says, I'm not getting out. And I'm going, I'm not getting out of the suit now. Why? I mean, why did Ryan jump out if they were shooting at him? Well, I don't know, because I guess he wanted him to... Uh, because I think he said they mean business or something, you know, and that's right. what I got out. Right, right. And then they took him immediately and arrested him, I mean, and uh, he came out and arrested him. Yeah. Wow. And so then, so then, uh, what says that? He said, they said something about what the women that was, and, and that's why he's stalling. He says, you guys can get out if you want to, well, you know, I couldn't really, the door was locked, but I, uh, I mean... I could have made him, except for Victoria said, I'm not getting out, and I'm not about to leave her, you know? Right. That's my mother instincts kick in. Well, and she didn't <laughs> want to get... I believe her. She's 18 years old, this apparently. Is she the... Is, is she... She's not wanting to get out because she was afraid? Oh, yeah. And so she said, I'm not getting out. So we did. And so he just... He just said he didn't get it, so we slipped down to the floor. I said, how far, how far do you 
was yelling at them at that time, too, by the way. He was yelling at them, we're going to see the sheriff, we're going to see the sheriff. And so when we got down there, um, and he hit, and we were down low, then they're yelling, video this, boy, turn my video cam on. And that's when we start, uh, all I know is that he gets to the roadblock, and he tries to go around it. I remember we're hunkering down. Um, did, do, you, do you know he was trying to go around it? See, what, one of the things I noticed is that he stepped on the brakes. So he must have been going pretty fast, but I couldn't tell if he was trying to stop and just couldn't stop in time or if he was actually trying to go around it. Well, he did hit the brakes. That's true. He did hit the brakes because I remember we kind of slid through that snow and he had to stop. So it came to stop and I had the, the snowbank because he was trying to get around them. And I guess he was going around. I'm sure he was. Anyway, so um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know. I just know he was swimming around that side, and then we hit the brakes, and we slid right up into the ice. Right. And there was sweats flying everywhere. And then the bullets started flying, and, and he screamed out the window, okay? Now, when you say you say the bullets started flying, you're talking... Shoot me. Go ahead and shoot me. Okay, we're going to see the sheriff. And he, and he goes, go ahead and shoot me. And... Uh, then he jumps out of the car, and he's got both his hands up. And then we can hear all the shots are going off, and they're, they're shooting, not just him, they're shooting our windows out. They're shooting everything. We can't get out of the vehicle. They're bullets, they're everything living, okay? We can't get out. There are lasers all over us. Ryan gets hit in the shoulder. We have, we have lasers all over on the mirrors, on the glass, on, the, on our knees, on that, you know? And we are just cowering down as low as we can get. And I got her head shoved down as low as I can. And Ryan's down to the floor. And we're trying to keep, she's trying to keep, we're trying to keep down as low as we can. And the bullets don't quit. They just keep going. And there's, and there's smoke screaming. They killed the boy. They killed the boy. They watched him get shot. Okay. And then, um, and then you'll hear us. We're just, we're just screaming, you know, stop, stop. You know, and she's yelling, I'm an EMT, I, you know, I, I, can, I can help him, I can help him. She's screaming, stop, stop, and she's trying to get over to the window, but the bullets keep coming. I'm right by that passenger door, and the glass is up, and they keep hitting that window. And we are praying, her and I are just praying out loud, okay? And as hard as we can, and, and the bullets are bouncing off this window. They didn't break that window, they were breaking all the other windows. Were they the didn't break that window. That's weird. And they're shooting in, they're shooting in uh, gas, you know, bomb things. And so they're gassing us. And so I had that down jacket on. And her and I had our nose in the, in the jacket, in my jacket. And I'm just trying to keep her down, you know? Yeah. And uh, and then finally, uh, because they, they weren't letting up, um, that's when I started screaming to stop. So then they finally must have heard her because they stopped. And, and we've been there for, oh, I don't know, five, ten minutes, you know? And still, after he was already dead, and they were still shooting. They, were, they planned to kill us all. There's evidence. So finally, they said, and then they get on the boat and said, send the, the mail out, you know, which was Brian. And he got out, and of course they got him, maybe walked backwards and took him. And, and then she got to get out. And then, um, then they came, and then uh, I had to leave the camera and my phone because I had to get my hands up and come out, climb out. And they put us on the ground and, and put handcuffs on us. And then they continued to shoot the truck. They said, is there anybody else in the truck? As we're walking away from I said, no, there's nobody in there. I said, absolutely nobody is still in the truck. Okay, we get away from it. And they just open fire and keep blowing holes in it. And they broke the window where I was sitting. Weird. Yeah. And it was evidence that they had every intention of killing us. They, were, they didn't want us to live. Wow. It was, it was crazy. Did and we said, you murdered him in cold blood. You, when we get there, see, as, you, as I watched that video, FBI video, I can see what he was doing. He comes out of the truck. He has his hands up. My guess is they shot him in the leg, okay? Because you can hear the shooting. They shoot him in the leg. Or I don't even know how many times they shot him, but I know the, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive he had both of the best on, okay? As a big one, but he's, he's stumbling through the snow, and they shoot him, and he turns back, like he's coming back to the truck. 
Yeah. And the one that finishes him off is a long rifle over to the side, the sniper. He's about 50 feet from him. Yeah. And blows him away. And then, and then, and then so he falls backwards into the snow. He does not have a gun in his hand. He is dead. When he gets out, his hand, his left hand is still laid out. His right hand is halfway to his chest, and he, you know, like was up. But he, but he has no weapon in his hand. He never unholsters his gun. He, 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 you know, he just kept saying, hey, go ahead and shoot me, go ahead and shoot me. And, and they, they just lamb back to them. And even after he was dead, they shot him. It was, it was a nightmare. And I said to the girl, I said to Victoria, I said, uh, and we said to you, you guys murdered him. You murdered him in cold blood. You're, you're a bunch of murderers, killers, you know? Um, do you, why, do why you believe? You, why did you do that? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Yeah, sure you didn't. We could see all the guys standing behind the tree. Some of them had those little foot, uh, binocular things on their, on their hats, you know? Yeah. They, they were a bunch of snipers. They were just the killers. It, yeah. it, it was unreal. And, um, so then she said, uh, I said to her, you just witnessed something you'll never forget for the rest of your life. And you, and whoever gets out of this, if you get out of this, you are to tell everybody you see. She said, I will. I will. I said, tell them the truth. Tell them what really happened. You know? Are, and, uh, are you sure? I mean, I, do you know, you know, when the FBI said that there was a gun, they, you know, they said there was a gun in Lavoie's, uh, inside coat pocket. Do you know if that's true or not? I have a gun. I saw him laying on the ground. He never reached for his inside pocket, nothing. He had a, he had a, a pistol strapped to his hip. Why in the hell would he reach inside for a gun? You mean when they shot him, he had that pistol that he normally carries? Because I've, I heard... Yeah, it was on his hip. He, he wasn't wearing any way. He did not have a gun. He never had one in his hand. Huh. Yeah, right. Why would he have holster when they were shooting at him? They people have said. Why did he get the gun? Why did he get the gun out before he got out? Right, right. That's what I wondered. Right. I'm not. You know, I'm not. See them all. There's a, there's a bunch of them. I they all behind the trees there. Snipers. Did did he did he say anything to you before he got out? Did he say anything to you girls before he jumped out? And what was and what was he yelling? Okay, he said, "Just shoot me, shoot me, shoot me." That's all he said. Because he, and they did. He was, he was yelling at him. And it, he had his hands up, and he was yelling at him. It sounds. And they, just, and they did. It sounds to me like he saw that it was obvious they were out for blood, and he was trying to get away so they could get it over with, maybe to protect you guys. I mean, that's speculation, but that's what it sounded like. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, and that was, and that maybe was what you're thinking. I don't know. But he was bound and determined that we were going to get to the sheriff. And, uh, and when he saw it wasn't going to happen, maybe that's what he, I don't know. I don't, I can't tell you what he was thinking. Wow. But you, it was, but it was horrific. Now, after, after that happened, did you get a chance to talk to anybody? I mean, that Mark fellow says that he talked to you and that you I told him. did, because here's what happened. They picked it, they put us in the van. They went out and picked up everybody. So we take, we had all of us around the van. They picked, we got, put in first. And then they picked up the other guys as we went down the road. My neighbor stopped and put him in the van. Mark was sitting in front of us. He was a jackass. Let me tell you something. There's this poor girl who just saw a murder in front of her face. We were sitting on the, in the back of that truck, in the back of that van, and we were singing hymns. I'm trying to keep her calm down, okay? And, and we are singing hymns and as loud as we can. And, um, and, and, and pray. I'm praying, and I said, all right. It's okay. Anyway, so we pick up Mark, and he starts yelling, on me, shut her mouth. And we all turned on him and said, knock it off. She's a young girl, you know. I said, she has to deal with this. You knock it off. Right. Yeah, your jeep's there. We looked back and I said, yeah, your jeep's there. Where's your, is it 
Lavoie's dead, and he's talking about good thing his Jeep is still there. Right. And so, and we didn't tell them what happened. We were telling them what happened. He went down there he didn't see a thing in his crap. They didn't even know. We went around the fan before they saw. So he doesn't even know what he's talking about. So we go, so, and I just tell him what happened. We told him what happened. But, you know, he wasn't there. He didn't see it. Right. So then we get down to, so then we all get the vehicle and we take off. And then, um, I can't, I, we, no, we did take off. We were there for a long, long, long time. Hours. They left us there for hours, and they brought in all these guys. It was getting dark now, and they were trying to, I'm sure they were trying to figure out what the hell they were going to charge us with now, because they didn't know what, they had nothing to charge us on. Yeah, so I know. Said, Are we on the left? And they said, no, you're just detained. We're just detained. <laughs> He was the first one to get a story out because they let him go. Of course he was because he's telling lies. Wow. He didn't tell the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't know he wasn't even there. He's trying, to, he's trying to cover himself. He's the one that pushed us to go together. Wow. He was the one that was in the hurry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, it looks pretty, pretty bad. In fact, we know that we're, we're sure that he set us up. Wow. They knew exactly when we were coming in, too. And I was on the phone until we hit that area, and then the cell phone went dead. We couldn't call anybody. We couldn't get any. I was just on the phone right before that, texting and calling. And then all of a sudden, we have absolutely dead zone, and nobody has any service. And so that's when I had to pull out my camera and start videoing. Now, do you still have that video? No, they took it. They took everything. They took everything. They took my wedding ring. They took my clothes. They took my glasses. They took everything. Uh, the whole world went upside down. I've been they trying to make... I've been... Of course, we have to fight the fight. Yeah. Okay? We still have to stand for the Constitution. We cannot let this die. We cannot let LaVoy... You know, I, I, I'm a little nervous because I'm speaking out. Because they can, I, I'm still not out of the woods yet. Right. Because they can put me right back in, and I know that. But here's the deal. I have to get out, and I have to get the word out, and I have to get home. Okay, SAT. Yeah. Because if we don't, those guys are going down. So I, I had to get out, and I have to get help. And I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on it. Well, we have to get to. You know, I don't think. I don't want to put anybody in danger. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're talking big stuff here. Yeah. 
they will use everything in their power to wipe us out. We have to get the truth out because you know what? If we don't, we're hanging. We all stand together. We are we hanging separately. All right. Shauna, thanks for, for cluing me in. I, I, we've been praying for you and everybody else. And if you, oh, I mean, God, you know what? That's the only thing that's got getting us through. I love guys. I, I'm telling you. How did, how did Ryan? All I, these guys are together, and I'm all by myself. Yeah. And so they had to listen to me singing, singing him. <laughs> <we're performing. laughs> let me, I got a question for you. Let me, let me back up. I got a question I for you. I, <laughs> I got a question for you. Um, Ryan Bundy, he got shot before or a, before or after you got to the roadblock? No, after. During some time, I think it was while we were all hunkered down. Before, well, did he get shot before or after they shot Lavoie? I don't know. I don't know because bullets were flying everywhere. I don't know. There were bullets. Did you see any other bullets coming into the vehicle? Oh, we had to see the windows. They shot them all out. Everything was coming in. We had all kinds of stuff. Wow. They were coming from behind, though. That's why, that's why God saved us. Wow. They were coming from behind us. See, they'd already blown out the windshield. But I don't even know where they were standing, but they'd already blown out the windshield. Wow. And, and then they were hucking in the smoke bombs. Do you have any idea? Can you even estimate how many rounds? Or we were talking, you know, you said they've been... Hundreds. Uh, hundreds. I'm telling you, it was like riddling a tin can. Wow. And the lasers were everywhere. They were pointing the lasers, see? That's right. so freaky. Yeah. Because I'm going down, and I'm, and I'm pushing down on Ryan because I can see it's on his head, and I can see it on her knee, and I can see it. And we're moving, so we can't, so the lasers can't hit us. We can see the lasers. Right, right. What a, what a dramatic experience. Who ever lives through something like that? Well, I, only when God loves us, because we have to tell the world. Yeah. All right. That's we the. Have to take down. I'm telling you, there's thieves and liars and, 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 and murderers. Yeah. That's the only way. That's the only. The, I can't imagine any other way you made it through that alive except for the grace of God. It was only, and we know that. And, and bless. We pray and we thank him every day. And yeah. And we and pray and pray and pray and pray. I'll tell you I, the whole time. I couldn't you know, believe that one. We've just been praying together every day. I couldn't. Every time we see each other, it's just a prayer. And it's just making us sing. Wow. <laughs> oh, bless you, Shauna. All right. You you got my number. Uh, take care. Take care. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. See you later. Bye. 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 Okay. So as you can hear. Shauna Cox's testimony of what happened in the ambush and the assassination of Lavoie Finnicum. You can clearly tell uh, that with the other testimonies as well as with the video footage that they were riddled with hundreds of bullets. The federal agents had no intention of anybody making it out of there alive and God stepped in and said this is not going to happen. And that's what I want you to know. It is not going to happen because we have the Almighty God on our side and it the prayer warriors need to be praying and the individuals who call themselves Patriots or who are Patriots or truthers need to get this message out there Shauna Cox calls out the fact that Mark McConnell was not on site he had no idea what was going on he has been putting out lies he was also involved with setting up uh, all the and insisting that all the individuals be in one vehicle he also was involved with um, the plan of the meeting so that does bring into question especially after Shauna Cox's testimony that he was never charged with anything he got his Jeep back and everything else that he was allowed to be let go now if you also notice uh, they didn't know what they were going to charge them with and and the when you research the affidavits basically it's because they kept federal agents which is not a federal agent it's a BLM agent is what they're referring to and BLM are not federal agents they're agents of a private company from going to work so 
this would require an ambush of at least 50 um, officers on scene from what I've seen from the video. I'm sure there were probably more. And it would justify the assassination of an unarmed man. Uh, it is very clear that the two ladies, Victoria and Shauna, are telling the truth about what has gone on. Mark McConnell, obviously, is not, and that needs to be not only brought into question, but I would say needs to be investigated uh, as well by some of our investigators that are really good at doing that sort of thing. Because if he was, and I said if, not that he is, but if he was involved in setting up these individuals to be massacred by the federal government, then he must be held accountable as well by a jury of his peers. He must be held accountable if there is any other proof or documentation or anything that can substantiate that he possibly was involved with the setup. It needs to go before the grand jury. The grand jury needs to decide because if he was involved, then he is also complicit in and involved with conspiracy, assassination, attempted murder, kidnapping, and all of the such. I do still believe in innocent until proven guilty, so make no mistake. However, this definitely needs to be researched. Thank you, everybody. I will leave links in the description box below. I want to thank the American uh, FreeCapitalist.com for putting this out. And I want, I will leave uh, links, of course, in the description box below. I will also leave links to other sites like End Time News that has been so helpful in getting the truth out to the people and not twisting what is going on. I want to thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for protecting those individuals according to Shauna Cox's testimony. And I firmly believe it is all 100% true that the, the federal agents kept hitting the window in which she was by with bullets. They were riddling that window with bullets. And your bullets didn't work. It bounced off the window. They were unable to break that window until after all of them were out of the vehicle. Then they continued to fire on the truck, even after they had been told that no one was in the vehicle. At that point is when the window broke. You don't believe in miracles? You just witnessed one. Our Lord and Savior is Alpha Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is almighty and all-powerful. He is the I Am. And your bullets and your tyranny and your evil cannot stand against him. Thank you, God bless you, and good night.